Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In a previous video in this series, we figured out what the resistivity of nichrome is, we figured out what its specific resistance is in ohm meters, and what we're going to do now is we're going to repeat this experiment using the constantin. And the constantin has some differences about it. So you can see here that it's got a cross-sectional area of 0.075 millimeters squared. And once again, we've got that same length as we had before of 500 millimeters or half a meter. So let's take the resistance of the constantin and see what we get. So we'll plug this in over here and see what the resistance is on our mega. And you can see there on our AVO835, we're coming out with a value of 4.03 ohms. 4.03 ohms. So that's the value that we're going to use in calculating what the resistivity of our constantin is. So now let's go over and do the calculation. So we're now going to try and find our resistivity of constantin. So we've got here a resistance that we measured here. So R is for resistance and we measured that at 4.03 ohms is what that came out at. And you can see we've got the same length we had before, which is 500 millimetres. And again, we're going to change that into metres. We're going to change that into the base unit. So that comes out at 500 times 10 to the minus 3 metres. Again, it's worth reiterating at this point that this value and this value represent exactly the same amount of length. We've just changed the way that we've expressed it. The cross-sectional area of our conductor is 0.075 millimetres squared. So that's 0.075 millimetres squared, which is equal to 0.075 times 10 to the minus. Don't forget it's minus 6 because we're dealing with millimetres squared, not millimetres. And therefore that is the value in metres squared. So a very thin conductor indeed. And once again, we are trying to figure out what the resistivity of our material is. So we don't know what that is yet. Let's try and figure it out. So we could go through the process of transposing the formula one more time, but actually we've got to the point where we've got the formula we need. So we can just repeat that now. We can say that the formula will be the resistivity is equal to resistance multiplied by the cross-sectional area and divided by the length of the cable. So we can see there we've got uh, 4.03 multiplied by the cross-section area of 0 0.075 uh, times 10 to the minus 6. And then we're going to divide that by the length, which is 500 times 10 to the minus 3. So again, we'll bring our calculator over. One more time, we'll put the formula in just for the sake of completeness. So you can see there that our calculation that we'll put in will be uh, 4.03 times by 0 0.075 times 10 to the minus six. Notice I'm using that button there. I'm not typing in times 10. I just use one button press and it gives me the times 10. And then this becomes the power when you put that in over 500 times 10 to the minus three. And hit equals, and it gives us an answer of, oh my goodness, we've got 0 0.000000, let's make sure we've got this right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 6, 0, 4, 5. Again, that as a value is not much good to anybody, so if we hit the eng button, then we come out with a value of 604.5. Five, and now we've got times 10 to the minus 9 uh, ohm meters. So quite a microscopic value there, as you can see, because we've got a much thinner conductor that we're using here. So you can see there that that is going to be... Uh, we could write this. There's a couple of ways we could do this. We could write 604.5 uh, nano ohm meters. So that's what we could go for there if we wanted to. Uh, but I think most textbooks, when it's trying to compare it to other values, would probably put it as 0 0.6. And then we'd, we probably wouldn't worry about the rest of that uh, micro ohm meters. So it'd move the decimal point over there and change the nano to a micro. So you can see there that we've got a resistivity now of 0 0.6 micro ohm meters. And you can see how putting it into this form helps us to compare it with this value that we've got over here. If we tried to look at this number and compare it with this number, it doesn't make a lot of sense because we've got different 
sub-multiples going on. However, here we've got 0.6 micrometers, which gives us an idea that this is uh, a lower resistivity than this. So it just helps us to compare those two values by putting them both into the same sub-multiple. Now just a note here that if you look at the value of Constantin up on the internet then you'll find that you get varying values. Again it'll be somewhere around uh, perhaps uh, 0 0.49, 0 0.5 microometers. And again we're looking at this from the point of view uh, that obviously we've not got absolutely perfect readings here. There's some added resistance in the cables that we use, the, the leads that we used. And so that's why that might come out a little bit higher than that. So allowing for those things we can see that the uh, value of 0 0.6 micrometers brings us into a reasonable ballpark. So just bear in mind that as part of your electrical studies you may well get asked a question that looks like this. You might be given a value of resistance of a conductor, you might be given a length and a cross-sectional area of it and then asked to find its resistivity and from that you may even have to look that up against a, a table that you're given to try and figure out what the material will actually be. So it's very much worth trying to learn uh, this very important formula, R equals rho times L divided by A, and how to transpose it to make rho the subject. So at this point, all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching.